Hi everyone! Thank you so much for um, being here to watch the the WPPI edition of the Portrait System podcast. I have with me Sean Lee. How are you, Sean? Hi. How you doing? How's everybody? Interesting story. Sean and I both are part of the WPPI board. Yes. And that's how we met. And we've been wanting to meet in person, and then here he is. <laughs> yes, and we're both from Michigan, and we haven't met in person except in Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah, I know, so random, so random, yep. Right, I know he has so. his Detroit hat on, and I was like, that must be Sean. Rock that. All right, Sean, tell people what do you shoot? You know, just give us your whole kind of business information. Um, I shoot a lot of high school seniors, I shoot a lot of corporate. Um, and I also do a lot of traveling and teaching, so that's the most of, of what I do. I love the energy of um, high school seniors, and the reason I shoot high school seniors, and I used to shoot everything, weddings and, um, and everything else, families and everything else that you can think of, I shot it, but um, I can be as free as I want with high school seniors. Um, I make a lot of money in a short amount of time, nice. and I can have as much fun as I want and be as creative as I yeah. want with high school seniors. So, what do you mean by like you can be as free as you want? Like, is, are there limitations with shooting corporate or? Yes. So, I, and I do shoot a lot of corporate because they have budget. But the right. limitations with um, family or kids or anything like that, and trying to get that aesthetic right for family. With seniors, I can be as creative as I want, helping them to tell the story of their high school mm -hmm. career. With kids, they just want to be cool. Yeah. Uh, we get a chance to feature their stuff, which is really, really cool, whether that's a car, whether that's their phone, whether it's their headphones, whether it's the ripped pair of jeans that their mom absolutely hates. <laughs> we get to feature that in a creative way where we have like mom and a, putting the kid in a headlock and telling them to take the jeans off. Right. Doing that visually becomes really, really fun. So, awesome. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. So you're speaking. I am speaking. Yeah. What are you speaking about? I am speaking about um, the power of extraordinary torch storytelling in imagery. And, um, and I'm doing a live demo. And that's uh, Wednesday. That's tomorrow at 6 o'clock. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So I know you just said you can sometimes kids, the teens might bring in like a car or something. Like, are you very prop heavy? Like, do you encourage? So... Yes. So here's the deal. When we talk about when we talk about high school seniors, and I don't know if there are any high school senior shooters, but this could this could translate cross platform for you all. When you engage your client and you and you and you ask the questions that tell you the stories of what's really important to them, mm -hmm. you have them bring those things in. Mm -hmm. Right. Business wise, I don't have to have any props. I don't have to have backdrops because I don't really use backdrops. Yeah. Um, the props become their stuff, right? So the things that they love, the things that they hate, the things that form bonds and relationships within their families between a teenager and grandma or a teenager and great granddad, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, between the teenager and mom and dad or the love-hate relationship between a teenager and their siblings, right? Those right. types of things, the blankets that they slept with, the... the um, the stuffed bear that has been ran over by the car in the driveway that is dirty, 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 and mom never wanted them to bring that out the house, but we bring it into a session, and it becomes something memorable that they remember for the lifetime of, yeah. of the family. So. I love this. I feel like we've kind of gotten away from bringing in like tradition and meaningful things. Like mm -hmm. A lot of times, senior photos are about you know, the field or the makeup or whatever, but I love that. It kind of brings it back to tradition and just making it really meaningful. Storytelling. Yeah. It, it is, it really means that you have to get to know your client and you have to actually serve, you have to actually serve them well and serve their needs well and right. help them create memories that, and, and here's the, here's the, um, here's the result of that. When you actually serve a family well, and when I do a session, I, I don't just, bring the teen in I invite the entire family nice. if they got friends in school if I'm shooting a football player I invite the entire team and I shoot tethered on a screen I bring in all their favorite snacks uh, right you go all um, out That's and so awesome. and so when you shoot tethered on a huge screen and you have mom and dad and you have grandmom in there and you shoot a uh, an amazing photograph of that teenager that's getting ready to leave home Right. And get ready to go off to college and become a young adult or become an adult. The tear that flows down mom's face when she sees that image come up on the screen. Yes, right. Yes, um, yes. 
that kind of stuff becomes priceless and that serves them much more than if you were just posing them um, and taking an image. And so subsequently, if you serve them well that way, they tend to buy more images. So yeah. throwing a little business in there as well. Well, yeah, I mean, you're servicing them, but ultimately it's selling without being salesy. I Absolutely. Mean, it, you're bringing the emotion into it, which we all know is super important when it Absolutely. comes to selling. Absolutely. So. I did quick just quick story. I did a, a photograph one day of a teenager who was going to Harvard. He was very astute, very wise. His grandfather was paying for the high school senior photos. And you know, teenagers today, they love their Beats headphones, they love their iPhones, they love all of their gear, they love their stuff. And here we had granddad coming in um, who was from Africa, had a dashiki on, and we changed the roles. And so we juxtaposed them in a photograph and we gave we gave granddad the, the uh, Beats headphones nice. with the iPhone and we had him look like he was rocking out on, awesome. on the iPhone. This is granddad from Africa, right? And then we gave the young man a, a Time magazine and put glasses on him and he was reading very astute. And so we had granddad with his hands in the air making the face like he was rocking out and then the teenager looking at granddad like, granddad, please get it together. <laughs> right? That's the, awesome. That picture, along with the entire family being in there in the session looking at the screen, when that shot unfolded, they all erupted. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and, and that meant something because granddad and grandson were extremely close. Yeah. And so that kind of stuff is the stuff we love to do. They got that as a huge wall. Um, portrait right awesome. and put it in the family house Very so cool rock that sweet well yeah. sean tomorrow at six o'clock six o'clock yep. six p.m Very i don't know cool. what room but look look it up <laughs> i don't know what room i'm speaking in either I'm probably figuring that out. all right awesome thank you and i know this totally is not photography related but yes. you have a really fun announcement that you're making do you want to do that really quick yes yes so those of you all who may not know me um last year for and i know we at wppi but for professional photographers of america i was humanitarian of the year i've spent all of my career um, working hard to open up doors for, for everybody, all nationalities, all people. Um, we've invested in kids, in schools. We've initiated school programs in creativity and pay for those types of things. And so I was humanitarian of the year last year. And so I've been working all my life to serve people. Um, as a result, um, I am announcing on the 24th that I am running for State House of Representatives in the state of Michigan. So I am running and going into the political world. So rock yeah, that. Vote. I get you to know? vote for you because I'm in Michigan. So <laughs> Yes, rock that. Yeah, it depends on the district now. It depends on the oh. district. But keep me in you all's thoughts. Um, and if you have any questions and want to talk or chit chat, let me know. Awesome. I'll Thank be you, back Sean. here. I'll be back here at 1130. We'll have to do a full episode of you on the portrait system. Oh, that'd be dope. Yeah. That would be dope. Yeah. And for my Caucasian brothers and sisters, dope means that it's very good. <laughs> so, just wanna... I was picking up what you were laying down there, Sean. Oh, rock that. All right. Oh, thank you so much. Thank You're you awesome. so much, Nikki. I I'll appreciate it. All right. Have a great one. All right. Take care. Good luck tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Hi. Hello. I'm Nikki. Eddie. Nice to meet you. you. I, should, I didn't even say my name yet. I'm Nikki Klosser, by the way. Should have said that. Okay, tell me your full name. Where are you from? What do you shoot? Uh, full I'm name nice is Benny Migliorino. I go by Benny Miggs. Uh, say it again. Benny, Benny Miggs. Benny Miggs. Got it's a lot it. easier. It's yeah. a nickname from my eighth grade history teacher. He couldn't pronounce my last, my, my last name. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> uh, based out of Long Island, New York. Okay. Uh, my majority of stuff I shoot is more B2B, so business to business. Uh, Headshots, personal branding. I like to call them environmental portraits, and I do video as well. Awesome. Is that what you've always done? No. no. Uh, I mean, I started. I got my start doing uh, bands, like rock oh. bands, uh, cool. portraiture, not the live stuff. And then, mm -hmm. well, I still do some wedding stuff too. Uh, mm -hmm. During COVID, I had to pivot a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I actually, an unknowing COVID was coming. I started doing interiors and exteriors for architecture, interior design. Mm -hmm. My wedding stopped, and the, in my area, the real estate market went crazy. So uh, during COVID, I started doing uh, school, more spaces, interior, exteriors of interior design, construction, and real estate. Yeah, yeah. awesome. Yeah. It seems like a lot of people in the wedding industry started thinking outside of the box or like, what could I do different once COVID hit? You know, it, mm -hmm. I feel like people who were kind of almost ready to start getting out of weddings 
it was in the back of their mind that kind of catapulted it. Did mm-hmm. you feel like that was the case? Or? Absolutely, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. I just got lucky. I just started doing it a month before we got hit in New York, and uh, right. it was just a luck of the draw. So, wow. Yeah. So, so are you speaking? No. No, okay. So what for you is a typical kind of business to business or like personal branding shoot? What does it look like? Um, it really depends on what the profession is I'm doing. I get a lot of real estate agents coming in as one of the basic headshot, 15 minutes in and out. Okay. Then I get you have a studio? On, yeah. Okay. Small studio in, uh, in Long Island. Yeah. Um, and then I, I like doing more of the, I call it environmental portraits, but personal branding is like a term to be using now these days. Um, yeah. It's a good hour, a uh, minimum of an hour to shoot. But I also spend a good half hour prepping with them uh, in person session, making a mood board. Um, my, if I bring someone into the head studio for a headshot, I put them on a backdrop. No one knows what they do for a living. Yeah. I bring them, I go to their work environment and photograph them in their spot. And then you can tell right off the bat, you can tell what they do for a living. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. It's interesting like how you can really change up. So I do personal branding as well. But I hate going on location. I love it. So it's like we, you know, we can both do the same genre, but give a totally different look or type of photo. Like there's just room for all of us and for everyone's needs. So mm-hmm. yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so what has been? Or is this your first WPPI? It's my nineteenth. Nineteenth. Yes, two thousand four was my first one. Wow. Yes. Very cool. Did you stay at Hooters for your first one? My first one was at Bally's. Oh, I stayed at Hooters for my first. one. I did one. stay at Hooters the one year though. There was the I was at the MGM and they were sold out. So the first night I stayed at Hooters. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, okay, so nineteen years. Bally's, Paris, MGM. I can't remember. I, I, every, yeah. Everything since two thousand four I've been to. What keeps you coming back? <sighs> So what initially kept me, what initially got me here was print competition. Mm-hmm. Um, not just the competition itself, but just sitting through the mm-hmm. print competition. Just yeah. kind of watching all the judges kind of critique thousands of images that go through yeah. the print competition before I even enter. And you get, without even entering, you can learn so much. Mm-hmm. Um, my first year, I entered like 13 prints my first year. My second year, I wound up getting third place in group portrait. Awesome. And I'm like, all right, maybe I could do better. So the following year, uh, this is uh, when I was doing the band photography, I won the Grand Award for a group portrait I did in 2006. And then, so print comp definitely kept me going here. Um, then there's also, you know, the platform classes and then just yeah. the networking after the classes. Yes. You know, every hotel has totally. their lobby bar and everyone just knows we meet there. And I think all my friends from this industry I met at the bar. Yeah, isn't that awesome? Did yeah. you go to that party last night? The I did. I came party? in late last night. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was insane. I'm not a big like club party goer, but mm. it was so much fun last night. Fuji yeah. sponsored it, and it was like I think there were like a thousand people. Yeah, I had a friend who was here. She said she couldn't get in. It was just so oh, busy. Oh, <laughs> bummer. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Um, it was pretty fun. Mm-hmm. But like you said, like the friendships and and just lifelong friendships I've made mm-hmm. from meeting people at WPPI. It's yeah, pretty awesome. For sure. Yeah, very cool. Well, it's so nice to meet you. Thank you very much. Benny, where can people find you online? What's uh, your... Benny Mix Photo. Uh, that's B-E-N-N-Y-M-I-G-S Photo. Sweet. Yes. Awesome. Thank well, you very much. Well, super nice to meet you. You too. Have fun. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. I'm Nikki. Hi, Nikki. I'm Gary. Say your name. Gary. Gary, what's your last name? Anderson. Gary Anderson. And where are you from and what do you shoot? I'm from Gulf Breeze, Florida, and I shoot boudoir with my wife, Madison. Oh, She's nice. over there. Oh, hi, Madison. <laughs> okay, tell me a little bit about you guys, and when did you, when did you start shooting, and just, you know, just give me, like, the, the overview of your business. Uh, so we went professional, if you will, uh, during COVID. Really? Uh, yeah, so I had been working with a lot of local artists uh, in Pensacola, Gulf Breeze area, the Panhandle of Florida. Yeah. Uh, for about two, three years, and then I just decided to make the leap, and we had a friend who just contacted us, like, hey, we're looking to do boudoir. I was like, okay, never done it before, but I'll do it. Uh, and then it just spiraled from there. Um, I do have a separate side where I do more commercial stuff. I work with builders, designers, real estate yeah. agents, that sort of thing. Uh, but boudoir is definitely more rewarding. Uh, it's a lot more hard work, too, I think. Yeah. Um, but now, yeah, you said it spiraled from there. Like, does that mean that I'm assuming this means that you either provided really great service or connected well with the person you photographed, and therefore it started to spread? Is that? Yeah, so it, it spiraled both from a uh, gaining clients perspective as well as my understanding and love to do it and seeing the reward uh, that 
Madison and I get from shooting uh, in to some degree changing a, a part of um, the majority of our clients are women so changing women's lives in our small part yeah that's awesome how like how would you say a shoot with you impacts them personally I mean generalizing obviously everyone's a little bit different but I would say the most consistent comment or review that we get from our clients is that they the way that they view themselves is after the shoot after the experience before they even get the pictures really is uh they now know they can do certain things in their life or they view themselves in a way that they never could have in the in the past uh whether yeah. it's empowering it 100 percent empowering yeah. uh and and it really does affect other aspects of their life not just their their personal view of themselves and their body but they go out and they step into new aspects of their, their careers and their other relationships, either with their kids or husbands mm-hmm. or whoever it is. Yeah, that's great. Very cool. And how do you two, Madeline, right? Madison. Madison. Sorry, Madison. How do you kind of divvy up what you do within your business? So that's actually a challenge we've had to figure out because we do market ourselves as a couple shooting team. Mm. Uh, because we get two different perspectives and our clients benefit from that. Yeah. And also from a workflow standpoint, we can get wide and detailed shots at the same time. Right. Uh, so we can shoot twice as many photos in, in that time. Uh, but we do both, if I'm honest, she does pretty much everything and I get the fun of shooting. Nice. Yeah, so as far as divvying up responsibilities, we both shoot, we both uh, interact with the client, everything from once we get the inquiry all the way through delivery. Um, she does a lot of the editing, a lot of the advertising, marketing, all the business stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's how that's how we split it up. Awesome. Very cool. Where can people find you online? Uh, so our website is darkroomboudoir.com. Awesome. And you can find us at on Instagram and Facebook as well. Have you been to WPPI before? This is our first year. First year? What yeah. do you think so far? Uh, extravagant. I think it's ah, very involved. Nice. A lot of... Uh, expertise everywhere you go um, I mean I'm staring at photo wall right here where these are just absolutely amazing photos but seeing the perspective and hearing the process that other photographers are going through to create mm-hmm. those images is enlightening yeah it really is isn't it yeah anytime I see a speaker I always learn something like some sort of golden nugget that I'm gonna take away always yeah and, yeah. and even yesterday we we're sitting in a class talking about branding and something as simple as a font and how that portrays your business is uh, something to take away. Yeah, very cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. It was thank nice you. to meet you, Gary. Yeah, nice to meet you. <laughs> uh, hi! Oh, my gosh! How are you? I'm great. Maureen. It's so nice to be here. Ooh, will you introduce yourself really quick? Tell everyone what you do. Absolutely. I am Maureen Nysis. I'm with Graphy Studio. I manage the U.S. and Canada for the company. And I've been going to WPBI for 18 years. Oh, my gosh. I've been with Graphy for 23 years. Wow. Started the company out of the basement of my home. And I'm thrilled to see all of you here and the energy has been amazing. Oh, so wonderful. And fun fact, the last time we cha- saw each other was in Italy at the Graffi Studio, Studio Castle, eating yes. like home-cooked food from the local village. <laughs> Are you coming in June? I can't. I can't this time. I'm, oh my, okay, wait. Side note, I know I'm going to say I'm taking my niece to Greece, and I know this is like the fourth time I've said it in the last couple... Someone told me last night that I need to stop talking about how I'm taking my niece to Greece because I've said it three times in the last three episodes, but now I'm saying it the fourth time. I can't go because I'm taking my oh, niece to Greece. We're going to miss you. You haven't missed one yet. So this will be going on our fourth so bummed. workshop with Sue Bryce, and we have uh, Terry Hofford, Kara Marie. We have, in this year, we did two events versus one because the nice. first, the, the last it three sold years out. Yeah. sold out within days. So we wanted to make it accessible for everybody around the world. We're at more than halfway sold out and, and it's an experience because it's at the Graffy oh, Studio it's Castle. Incredible. And the base of the Dolomites and as you said, the food and, yeah. and and we're in the Prosecco region, so they're known for their their wine and at lunch rice. too. In Italy you get Prosecco at lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't we have a little Prosecco? I, I know. Aaron, Prosecco? <laughs> no. 
No, it, my son took some of his first steps in that castle. The first time I went, oh, such great memories. It's such a wonderful place to learn and shoot, and the backdrop is just second to none. It is. It's The only way that I can describe it is it's magical. When yeah. you can immerse yourself into a facility like the Graffy Studio Castle, the learning is a, is a completely different level of learning. Mm-hmm. It's, it's mountain fresh air, the, the culinary experience combined with the top educators. I, I really don't think there's anything comparable in our industry in the world. Yeah. I've said this before, too, on the podcast, is when I was there and I got to pet the new velvet boxes. Are those out yet? So we are so close. After that workshop, I've never had so many requests for a product, and, and I'm excited that we're going to be uh, working on, on a lot of new products. And we're here. We're at the, on the show floor, like right when you are walk Are the velvet in. boxes here? We have boxes here. We have some of the materials that you're referring to. Yeah. And we're in booth 1601, so we're, we're really excited to show all of the new initiatives that we've been working on. And with awesome. the Sue Bryce collection, we've launched a lot of new products, too. Yeah, very cool. Oh, awesome. Okay, so 18 years of WPPI, what makes you keep coming back? Is it the people? Is it, you know, what is it? So it's, a, it's really a combination for me. I, I've created over the many years some strong connections in the industry. So when I yeah. see, I just love seeing Arlene walking down the hallway. Oh, she's the best. And this like really energetic, like, I call it a little gallop, the Arlene gallop, but she's my all-time <laughs> favorite and a good friend. And so the connections that I've created in this industry um, are really important. And that's why going mm-hmm. to trade shows in person, you can't replace them. Totally. And you just get to, you get to feel everything, like, like touch things. I mean, you can look at all the graphic products online, but when you're holding them, it makes the decision process easier and it just helps you to really make that choice. So I, I think yeah. a lot of people struggle with choosing products. I do too. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and what, what we do is we have a dedicated sales representative. So we take all of that difficult, that undaunting task out of the equation yeah. and we're hands on. So our customers that need that special, con- it's really having an assigned sales consultant that, that can coach you through all of the products. Yep. And what's nice about the booth and being here for all of you that are here you develop those relationships with your sales representative and you put a face to a name yeah yeah that's awesome sweet all right are you are you hanging out tonight so I'm old now you are not you're not that much older than me so and you can't say you're old I need to go to bed early I th- these these shows in Vegas so if you were to say what's one thing that you try to avoid and I don't try to avoid that because you, you do actually develop some some additional connections you know, yeah. during the day and at night too, but I, um, I I try to get to bed early. Yeah, I will be tonight because I speak tomorrow, so I have to be like on it. I was up late last night. <laughs> and, and I hope that's not why your eye has a little um, oh, bloodshot. Oh, that happened before I, I went out. Like sometime around like when I landed on my flight and two hours later, all of a sudden my eye was completely red. No so, idea what happened. So you can go out, and nobody can say your eyes are bloodshot. You could just say it's it's because I, yeah, I, I, <laughs> true. The, it's funny because this happened, I think, last WPPI when I was speaking. So I don't know. Maybe it's my annual blood b- vessel bursting in my eye. It's dry air. There, there's something. <laughs> could there's something be, about could the, be. the, the Well, dryness. thank you, Maureen. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you so much. I'll come chat. Okay. Come chat later at the Graffy booth. It. Thank you. Hi there. Hey, how are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm good. Good. I'm Nikki Klosser. I'm Jason Smith. Jason Smith. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Tell, I know you just said your name, but tell everybody what's your business name, what do you shoot, where do you live? All right. Uh, well, my name is Jason Smith. I'm from Houston, Texas. Uh, I shoot a lot of corporate headshots. Mm-hmm. I've done a few weddings. I average about one or two weddings a year. Uh, I've done a maternity shoots. Uh-huh. I've done a few baby shoots. And I take a lot of pictures of my children and my dog and my wife. Awesome. Very cool. Have you been doing this for a while or are you newer at this? So my dad has been taking photos before I was even born. So he kind of got me in earlier on. But I started taking it seriously, like as business, like in 2010. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Do you do this full time? I don't. It's my like side hobby job. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Do you do you want to go full time, or are you just totally content with where you're at? Uh, I'm kind of content. You know, I like. I think I'm 
where I'm comfortable right now. Yeah. So, but I do enjoy it. I'm glad I came to, like, this is my first time coming oh, to WPPI. Oh, it is? Okay, awesome. Uh, my buddy told me about it. He came to the house to drop off uh, an image, and he was telling me that he was coming here. I'm like, I never knew that they had conferences for photography, and I'm here. Wow, very yeah. cool. Did you come by yourself? I didn't. So he came... My buddy name's Evan White. He came on Monday, but my mom and I threw out on Sunday. Oh, I so, love yeah. that. How yeah. cool is that? Yeah, is she a photographer? She's not, uh, but she she's dealt with it because well, my dad. You know, right, right. Oh, how fun. Used, you know, all of us as news. I hope uses. my kids want to travel with me to this stuff. That's awesome. Oh, that makes me so happy. Okay, so you got here Monday? Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. Okay, and what have you done so far? So Sunday, checked in, uh, kind of walked around. I love the check-in process. It was seamless. Oh, good. You know, I love how you guys integrated the tech. You know, I just brought my QR code. They printed out the, the batch right out. Uh, so that was pretty much it for Sunday. Uh, Monday, starting off, I went to Weddings and Beyond. Uh -huh. I think Jermaine had that class. And then after that, uh, again, it was another wedding album. Oh, uh, nice. I forgot the speaker name, but it was really good. And then last, uh, how to make your images stand out. And I think that was Tony, I believe. Oh, I'd have to Hewitt, look at the list. Oh, yeah, Tony Hewitt. Yeah. Oh, to he's so. from um, New Zealand. Yeah, yes. exactly. Tony's amazing. I get yeah. to, I get to, I have to, I got to find him at some point, but I get to speak at NZIPP in New Zealand, and Tony's wow. speaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he and was I telling us about the person. plane. He was like, they were like saying, how do you get those perpendicular images and you don't have a a drone. He's like in the plane and he was telling us how the plane has the bank. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you're a brave man. And he had all these photos of him taking these images out of a, out of a plane. Of a small Oh plane. my gosh. <laughs> Incredible, right? Yeah. It's so, Amazing. That, that's something I love about this so much is you just get these different perspectives from different photographers all over the world. And mm. I don't know if you, have you ever listened to the portrait system? That's what this, this uh, will be on the portrait system podcast. I've just been introduced to it. Okay. Awesome. So if you listen to it, you'll hear like, I interview people from everywhere, all different countries around the world, and just hearing how different people are running their business in, like, the UK, Nigeria, Australia, New York, Kentucky. You know, it's it's pretty fun. It's really cool, and I love that here you get to hear about these stories in person, and, yeah, so. The network is priceless. Yeah, yeah, it really is. It really is. Awesome. Well, I hope you have a wonderful time. And tell everybody your business name, where people can find you online. So um, my IG is xmedia360, and it's the same on Facebook, TikTok. So xmedia360. xmedia360. All right, Jason. All right, awesome. thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. It was so nice to meet you. Nice meeting Take you Take care, well. okay? All right. Hi. I'm Nikki. Hi, Nikki. I'm Mary. How are you? Mary, I'm wonderful. Thank you. Your makeup looks great. Your oh. skin's like flawless. Thank you. Yeah, you're Thank welcome. Thank you. Okay, introduce yourself and let us know where you live. Are you an attendee? Are you a speaker? What do you shoot? All that good stuff. Yeah, um, my name is Mary Vance. I am a speaker here at WPPI. This is my second year speaking. I awesome. love it. I love everything about uh, being at this conference. I am a senior photographer. Um, so I spoke yesterday on authentic, uh, my authentic approach awesome. to senior photography. I'm based in Seattle uh, oh, area. Seattle. Yeah, yeah. What city? Where? Where specifically? So specifically in Sammamish. Oh yeah. Um, yep. And so on, on the east side, I know. Um, actually, know some friends of yours who. Oh no kidding! <laughs> yeah. Photographer friends or just uh, random? No, actually, an author that I sat next to on a plane and was like, she was Seriously? like, oh my gosh, yeah, Kelly. Kelly McNillis? Yes. No way. Oh my gosh. Well, Kelly Senegal now. How funny. So, what a yeah, small, small world. world. Yeah. A small world. I know, right? Um, so yeah, Seattle-based uh, seniors is my my main thing, and that's what I spoke on yesterday. I'm also going to be speaking um, on hybrid storytelling here in the Rangefinder Lounge on Thursday. I'm doing image reviews um, right now and kind of over the next two hours, and so yeah. just really enjoying everything about WPPI this year. This vibe is Isn't like, it it's amazing to feel yeah. this room and and um, just feel all the energy that mm. feels here after these years that have been kind of like gross. Like, I know. This just feels so life-giving like to back. be in this space. We are back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, it's so great. Okay, I know you said you spoke about authentic senior portraits. It, I know you have a whole keynote around all of it, but what 
Like if you could just take one or two takeaways from it that you could talk about of how to kind of keep it authentic, what would that be? Yeah. So my approach to senior photography is actually really counter industry to the senior photography industry as a whole. It is not, um, it's not editorial. It's not high fashion. It doesn't focus on model teams as marketing and stuff like that. What I always like to say is that my approach to senior photography takes the other 99% of the kids that don't fit a very narrow 1% model mm-hmm. mold mm-hmm. and it welcomes and it embraces them. I love that. I'm huge about inclusion. Um, I've written some things for Rangefinder as well, some articles that you guys can probably link or something that um, you know talk about the neurodivergent teens yes. a lot oh, and how to work so with important. neurodivergence. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, inclusion in terms of, you know, just the, like adding a space to your uh, intake form about pronouns, you know what I mean? And so so people that are on the LGBTQIA plus spectrum, I have a a kid of mine, uh, one of my own kids is non-binary, and so it's actually a really important thing for me to make these emerging adults feel like they are a part of of the fold and to welcome them in no matter how they come to me. So that's what my uh, my takeaways are. That's fantastic. (laughs) Very cool. Mary, how long have you been doing this? Uh, about a decade for, oh, yeah. for seniors and senior awesome. photography and stuff like that, yeah. Very, very cool. All right. Where can people find you online? Um, online, you can find me. Uh, my name is basically everywhere. So it's Mary Vance. Um, and so MaryVance.com is my website. That's where people can find me. Um, they can find my education there as well. Um, on Instagram, Mary Vance Photography, really nice and simple. Pinterest, Mary Vance Photography. Facebook, Mary Vance Photography. Yeah. Awesome. So Keeping it simple, I love that. It's very simple. <laughs> it's easy for people to find you that way. That's how it is with my name too. It's yes. Just, yeah. So. Love it. So. All right. Well, it's nice to meet you, Mary. It was great to meet I'll you. See you around, well. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a good and, day. Uh, Enjoy yeah. the conference. Safe trip back to Sammamish. Thanks. <laughs> Matt Stagliano. Matt has a full episode on the podcast and I don't have my notes in front of me so I don't remember what number it is do you? it was early on it was 20 six, somewhere 20 in the 60s or... ish okay. something like that yeah. anyway what's new Tell, uh, introduce yourself in case people don't know who you are sure I'm Matt Stagliano I own Stone Tree Creative I'm a portrait photographer in the mountains of Maine in a tiny little town yeah and I love it yeah very similar to where you are. yeah yeah uh, but yeah I'm so here the thing that I love about WPPI is just this energy that comes with it, right? So yeah. just seeing everybody boil over and come in, I'm getting to play with some new things. I never get the chance to do that. We don't have this the kind gear, of The gear, yes. We haven't talked about that yet. How you get to actually, like I've been talking about the print products, but you get to test out gear. The gear is insane. So I've switched to Fuji a few years ago. Oh, you and did? And they're doing this whole camera to cloud thing where it's instantaneously uploaded and then AI edited awesome. and you can sell it immediately. So that's the stuff that gets me excited. Yeah. So. Heck yeah. Very cool. Have you been to WPPI before? I was here last year for the first time. And yeah. it was, you know, the resurgence, everybody's starting to come back. But mm-hmm. this year's a whole different level. The shooting yeah. bays are incredible. The vendors are insane. So, yeah, I'm having a great time. Yeah, awesome. Has anything changed or, like, new and exciting since we did your episode? I think there's a lot that I've learned over the years, and I'm turning into mentoring for new photographers. Mm-hmm. So I'm doing a lot more education, um, focusing a lot more on teaching photographers how to shoot video. Uh, uh, because I do so both. Important. And, you know, there are certain techniques that you can use. You don't have to be Martin Scorsese, but you can use the video functions of your camera and add that into your repertoire, sell it to your clients. So I'm focusing on that. Yeah, that's awesome. And not only just for that, but I feel like with video, for getting behind the scenes, like showing the service that you provide is is key because if people don't know that you offer whether it's hair and makeup or helping them choose what to wear or whatever that is if they don't know that if you're not showing it how would they know and video is such a great way to do that it's the best part of my website for my clients because i step through every part of my process and i give them short digestible videos so that they smart. can watch so they already have a feel for what i do and how i work and it just breaks down a ton of barriers. So if you have the capability to do it, it adds so much value to the business. And how do you feel about like people showing themselves? So Matt, you showing you in the videos as opposed to only showing your clients? I think with there's so much focus on authenticity and showing up as your real self. If we're not getting in front of the cameras, how can we expect our clients to do it? Totally. So by getting in front of the camera, speaking your language, talking to your clients in the way that you would in a consultation, 
it really helps get them connected to you in a different way than just reading totally. the website. Totally. Yep, yep. It's, it's been a godsend. Yeah, you have to show your face. If you are not on your website, if you don't have posts about yourself on Instagram mixed in there or whatever, it's so important. People are looking to connect and if they can't place, you might have great photography, but if they don't know what you look like, then totally. there's no real connection to the work. Yep. So if you focus on that, you know, it really does add in. Yep. People hire people they know, like, and trust, 100%. and they can't get to know you, like you, or trust you if they don't know who you are. <laughs> so, 100%. yeah. Very How are you cool. enjoying it? I love it. I actually went out last night. I mean, I say I stayed out late, but really it was probably, it was before one, I think. But my time, I'm Eastern time, so it was like four in the morning. Mm -hmm. Oh, my word. But it was great. <laughs> I had so much fun. I've seen, you know, you, like, Maureen and I were just talking about this. You meet so many people over the years, or I'm sorry, um, Benny and I were also talking about it. You meet so many people over the years, and then you, sometimes the only time you see them is here, like at the conferences or at the Portrait Masters conference. And it's just such a cool, it's like a reunion every year. It's my favorite time to travel because being so remote where I am, I don't get to just hang out in the city with other folks. So right. WPPI, I get to be around the tribe. Portrait Masters, I get to be around the tribe and there's nothing like it. Yeah. So all my best friends are so here. So true. It's so cool. It's so cool. It's awesome too because we kind of, you know, and people out there listening, I don't know if you feel like this, like you meet people online and you start to build this kind of friendship. But as soon as you meet in person, like my very first WPPI, the girl that I came with, Ashley Fisher, now she's a Ashley Fister, which is funny, she went from Fisher to Fister. <laughs> she, we met, we were planning our weddings online. This was way before Pinterest. And we, we were on this like wedding planning forum. And so that's how we met. And we both, I was a social worker at the time. She was an attorney. We both started our businesses together. We sparked this great friendship online. And she was like, hey, do you want to go to Las Vegas to WPPI? And I was like, what is that? OK, let's do it. So we stayed at Hooters because it was really cheap and it was across the street. And she's become one of my like dearest industry friends ever. And we had a blast. And here we were, you know, meet, going from online to meeting in person. So. Yeah. Especially in the Portrait Masters world, you know, you know so many people from the groups and you see the names online, but there's nothing like being able to shake someone's hand or hug totally. someone that you talked to over the years. And yeah, it's just, it's my favorite time. My yeah, favorite time. awesome. Okay, where can people find you? I know it's Stone Tree Creative, but yep. you want to say your Instagram or your... Sure, everything is at Stone Tree Creative, stonetreecreative.com, at Stone Tree Creative on YouTube, Facebook, everywhere, Instagram, YouTube. Awesome. So. Yeah, it's uh, very consistent, easy to find. Yep, and if you want to hear Matt's full story, again, he does have a full episode. I'm sorry, I can't think of the number of it, but it is there. So, and your story's great. It's a great one. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Thanks I'll for having later. me. Of course. Angie Davies. Hello. Angie just came to my in-person workshop in Michigan, so we got to know each other very well, and I photographed her. It was and amazing. So it was fun. So fun. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if you if we talked about WPPI. I don't. I had so much I don't, on my I, mind. It was a last did. minute decision. Oh, to come, okay. I didn't think so, you were coming. Yeah. yeah. Well, I had to convince my husband. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I need to do this too on top of Nikki's workshop. You know. <laughs> and here you are. Thing. Come yeah. a little bit closer to the okay. mic, just so. People, yeah, yeah. Okay. So Angie, introduce yourself. Tell everyone what your business name is. Where do you live? What do you shoot? So my name is Angie Davies, and my business name is Angelica Ann Photography. I live in Boise, Idaho. Um, I've lived there for two years, so I'm kind of starting all over again, trying to redefine my, my business. Uh, but I like to shoot boudoir, um, women, uh, and now with your course, I'm trying to do the personal branding and headshots. Yeah, awesome, awesome. So, Moving to Idaho from a new, you know, obviously, from California you moved, right? Well, I grew up in California, right, but okay. I lived in uh, Oregon. Okay, that's right, Oregon. So, going to another state, what is you? what have you found to be your biggest challenge starting over in a new state? Well, you don't know anybody, I mean, except some family members. So, really, I had to get myself out there, and I just took some little jobs yeah. just so that I could meet new people and kind of... Um, not sit home and, and hope that I would get clients. Right, you know? right. So I took a part-time little job at Macy's just to get find my makeup artists. Oh, nice. And, Smart. Right. And so I did that part-time. And, and then, you know, 
I think it's better to not sit at home and wish that I had clients. Yeah, yeah. So the networking part is just making sure you don't get depressed and yeah. just try to talk to everybody about what you do right? until you find someone who's interested. Yeah. I feel like one of the trickier parts about starting over again, obviously finding the clients, but it's like, you're kind of like, man, I've already done the work somewhere else and now I have to right. do the work again. And it's right. one of those things, but I don't know if, if you found it this to be this true or not, but for me, I remember moving, you know, from Seattle to Michigan, I'd already, I already had the website. I already had you're the portfolio. It's not like you're starting over like brand new. Right. It's just building up that client base again. Exactly. And also seeing what ticks in that area that you're in. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Um, I think it's not as like growing up in Southern California, I, the more glam and all that. But now I'm here in potato land right. and <laughs> right. it seems like there's more farmers and, you know, so yeah. I have to kind of understand who they are mm -hmm. and how am I going to communicate and reach out to them to make them want this kind of a photographer. Yep, you know? absolutely. Very cool. Where can people find you online? Um, I'm on Facebook, Angelica and uh, Davies. And then I am on Instagram, but it's Angelica and Davies, but I'm still working on Instagram. Okay. Yeah. I posted her photos. She's the she's the beauty in the pink pink leather jacket oh, and the pink background, like the light amazing. pink background. It was amazing to be at your workshop and be be photographed and and then see what the client is experiencing. But also then my skills. I'm like, oh, I should be doing this. I need to get that fan that you have that yeah. tilts up instead of trying to. Wrangle you know, it all, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. then actually seeing the photos and, and feeling the excitement that your customer's going to feel. Yeah. You know, and I mean, I'm in love with my pictures and I Good. can't wait I'm to, so glad. You look yeah, gorgeous. Yeah. And that's a really important thing to experience is going through a photo shoot, like exactly what your process. clients. Yeah. Right. It really is eye-opening. Right. I, I, I feel like I took a lot of lessons home and I'm like, I can do this. And it built my confidence back up, starting over. And I'm like, yep, I need to paint more V-flats. I need to get excited and just pull, pull them in and show them that I've had a shoot like this. And, right. you know, yes. that's helpful. And they're like, oh, I want to do that. Yeah. You know? Yep. So awesome. It's great. Sweet. Well, thank you. Well, Hopefully thank I'll you. Hopefully I'll see you soon. Okay. I'll see you later. Yes. Are you going to come see me tomorrow? Hopefully. At four? I'm staying that oh. um, I, I, I have to wait and see. <laughs> no, I, but, no, yeah, no, I would no like pressure. to see you. But I know you'll do wonderful, just like always. Thank you. I, love I you hope so. so. Much. We'll see. You're oh, awesome. I love you too. Okay, okay. safe travels home, okay? okay. Bye. Hi, I'm Nikki. I'm Casey, and nice to meet you. Casey? Yes. Okay. Sherman. Yes. Okay. Casey Sherman. Casey Sorry. Sherman. That's an easy one, right? Yeah. <laughs> do you want to introduce yourself and just tell people where you live, what you shoot? Yeah. My name is Casey Sherman. I live on Maui, so I actually live in Lahaina side, west side. Um, I've lived there for four years, and I shoot family portraits on the beach, couples, wow. maternity, and a little bit of weddings, like small elopements. He's just gonna adjust your mic really oh, quick. Thank you. There we go. Okay, that sounds really glamorous, like being a photographer in Maui. Yeah, it's really fun. Yeah. Um, the beach is your office so it's really nice yeah shooting on the beach is there a certain time of day that you prefer to shoot or are you just making light work at all times um i would say i prefer morning sunrise and sunset um depending on the beach you can get some nice open shade so yeah. but sunrise is really my favorite you get some gorgeous colors in the sky yeah yeah my family and i took a trip to maui i just i just had one kid at that point and we did a family um, shoot in the morning. Okay. Same thing. Awesome. Yeah. Where did you stay? Um, we stayed, I don't even remember. It was a condo okay. somewhere. Oh, nice. That's the way to do it. You have a kitchen and everything. Yeah, I can't even remember where it was at this point. Anyways, the weather was so windy. I, the, lo the locals are like, it hasn't been this windy in 25 years. And we were like, great. That's awesome. awesome. First you know time what? We here. It's really funny you say that because the forecast has been wind for the past three weeks. Oh. <laughs> so I'm like, it'll be romantic. It'll be beautiful. Like, 
we'll make it work and we've gotten some stunning shots so it's been good yeah yeah okay so mostly family how do you okay it was really hard for us to be up and have like hair and makeup ready you know my son dressed he was a baby all of that so early in the morning like how do you talk to clients about doing a morning so typically my family's on the east coast that's a five to six hour time difference and they're ahead so a okay. lot of people come to Maui and they find that they're up at 4.30 a.m. Oh, And so okay. usually if families with young children, I will tell them, I'll let them know, like make them kind of think about that. And like their right. kids will probably be up early anyway because right. children That's usually smart. rise earlier. And then I'll also encourage them to put the photo shoot earlier in their trip so that they're, you know, on that end of the time yeah. change so, so that it's smart. easier. Okay, so how do you know, are you from the East Coast originally? Like, how yes. do you, okay, so the people, so you have a network back in the East Coast, and then when they come to Maui on vacation, they book you? Well, I actually didn't start my photography business until I moved to Maui. Okay. So I've been in business a couple of years now. I've been a hobby photographer for, you know, 15 years. So, okay. um, I didn't really have that issue. Um, I did start in the hotels when I moved. Okay. So the great thing about that is I made a lot of connections with local families and people who are in the hotel so they can recommend me. And, uh, that's yeah. smart. Very smart. Yeah. Really, I mean, especially if I feel like if anyone's in a destination area like that, I mean, hotels are a great place to start to oh, get, yeah. yeah, to build up. That's awesome. And what have you, is there anything other than hotels that has really helped kind of get the word out for you marketing wise? Yeah, um, you know, just getting to know people on island, getting involved in different organizations, taking hula classes, like all sorts of things, because a lot of these people own homes, they own the condos like you were staying in, Mm -hmm. um, and then they can keep an album in their home and recommend me Uh, and get the family. Like an Airbnb, like when their guests come through sort of thing? Yes. Right. Kind of like that. Mm -hmm. Yep. I love that. Yeah. Very cool. Is this your first WPPI? It is. It is. What do you think so far? It's been amazing. Um, You know, on an island, I don't get to see this many creative. Right. So right. I definitely feel at home. Um, very inspired. The classes I've been to so cool. far and really incredible. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you. Where can people yeah. find you online, Casey? Yes. Yeah, so you can find me on Facebook at Maui Sunset Studios and on Instagram under the same name. All right. Very cool. Yeah. Thank you. It was thank nice you. to meet you. You as well. All right. That is all we have for this segment, but I will be back at 2.30 doing this again. Thank you.